Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another portion of the Demon Souls Remake playthrough walkthrough. Uh, this time I'm going to take you through stage 3-2, which is Upper Latria. Uh, quick disclaimer about these guides, the way this works is this is a sort of Let's Play style walkthrough, so I'm going to be playing and talking and recording all at the same time, and so you may hear some background noise, you may hear my controller vibrate, you may hear my dog bark, that's happened in one of the videos, um, but it's a very casual style playthrough, and I'm just providing help along the way, showing you the correct path through each of the stages so you don't get lost. Um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of the disclaimer. And even though we are going to level 3-2, at this stage of the game, it's very important that we start focusing on our weapon, and we want to make sure we are upgrading our weapon uh, as we proceed through the game. So this vendor right here, I'm in photo mode for a reason, and that is because uh, the flying bear bugs can attack you while you are dealing with the filthy man here. But in stage 2-2, two, two, in uh, Stone Fang Tunnels, and the Tunnel City, I think this archstone is called, uh, at the bottom of this scaffolding area, this is where you met Patches. But if you come down here, the filthy man is sitting right here. It's a little hard to see, but he is here. And he sells uh, sharp stone shards, hard stone shards, as well as large hard stone shards and large sharp stone shards. And these are needed for uh, upgrading your weapon, I think, past plus four or plus five. Um, and you're going to need a lot of them to get to plus ten. Um, so... I didn't want to go into uh, Upper Latria without feeling very confident and I'd be able to kill the man-eaters. Um, and it's a tough boss fight, so I farmed up a little bit. I farmed some souls, um, and I just spent a whole bunch with the filthy man right here. So uh, additionally, uh, the pickaxe scale miners that are found in 2-1 uh, and 2-2, they also have a chance of dropping shards and large shards. Um, but truth be told, the amount of souls that you're going to collect from farming them for shards can easily just be spent with the filthy man. So that's why I came here. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So like I said, the, the flying bear bugs are here and they can attack you while you're trying to do business here. So we're going to quickly quit out and then depending on how many souls I have left, I'm just going to die if I have a very small amount. Uh, yeah, only 159. Cool. So I'm, I'm just going to jump off here and die, and this will bring us back to the Archstone. So, once we respawn, we are going to warp back to the Nexus. This way we can upgrade our weapon. And unfortunately, I died while in body form here, and that resulted in me losing a point of world tendency. So I can no longer finish that Scrivier the Wanderer quest. But that's okay, we don't really need to do that for this playthrough. Alright, so first let's visit Stockpile Thomas. And then we can dump a whole bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, as you can see, venturing through um, Stone Fang results in a lot, a lot of upgrade materials, some weapons. It's uh, it's pretty gnarly. Let me also change my catalyst out. Okay. Yeah, let's dump the wooden one. Uh, we don't need a bow for Latria. Um, and I don't think I have any additional armor on me. Okay, cool. We're going to have poison resistance. We won't need that. Um, I think we're good. I think we're good for now. So now that Stockpile Thomas has all of our stuff, we can then repair our equipment. Oh, I need to crack open a soul real quick. We can repair our equipment with Blacksmith Baldwin here. Okay. I don't even know if it's going to be enough to upgrade anything. So we're going to upgrade to plus 7. And we can actually upgrade to plus 8 right now. That's great. I should have uh, farmed a little bit longer and bought more uh, large shards. I should have bought more shards. I would have been able to uh, actually do some damage. Maybe could have gotten a plus 10 if I bought a whole bunch more. But plus 8 should be just fine. Wow, we can go to plus 9. Are you kidding me? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we can't go to 10. We need shards and large shards and a couple chunks. Okay, plus 9 is a perfect place to be. So before I jump into 3-2, we have a longsword plus 9. I'm using the fluted armor set. I have the providential ring and the cling ring. Uh, my grass is very low. <laughs> now that I'm seeing it, actually, that's funny. Um, I think we, we, should, we should be able to pick up some grass in Latria, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm level 31 with 21 strength. 
and 21 endurance and 20 vitality. Okay, actually, you know what? Just to be on the super safe side, let me buy some grass from Baldwin. Actually, let's buy from Patches. He sells better grass. Uh, that should be fine for Latria. Go ahead and equip that. All right. So, Archstone of the Tower Queen. We're going to go to Upper Latria right now. Okay, in Upper Latria, I really recommend... Um, doing this area in spirit form. This is easily the most popular PvP area in the game due to the way the boss works in 3-3, uh, which we'll get to later. Um, okay, so the mission here in Upper Latria is to... There, I'll go into photo mode really quick. There's a heart inside of this tower right here. And it is held together, or held in place by these green chains. There's one in this tower, and then there's one in another tower that we cannot see. I think it's behind it. Uh, so basically the mission of the stage is to break the two chains, and then that drops the heart down to the bottom and gives us access to the top. So that's basically what we got to do. So it's a fairly linear stage, but because it's so dark, uh, it can be a little hard to see where you need to go. All right, so we're going to get a treasure over here. And believe it or not, this one chain that we can see is actually the second chain. So, a bit of uh, foreshadowing in the environment there. Okay, so once we get that treasure, we can go ahead and hop back. And many enemies in this stage uh, are these gargoyles. So you're going to run into these guys a lot. Uh, some of them will just be flying up in the air. Some of them will um, be posed on statues. Oh, we actually have two. That's wonderful. I don't think I realized that. Um, these guys aren't necessarily weak to much. They might be weak to piercing weapons. Uh, their AI is honestly a little a little shoddy. Um, so just keep that in mind when fighting them. Sometimes uh, they wind up... Oh, God. Sometimes they wind up uh, sort of flying in place for a little while. Um, another thing you got to watch out for is because they are flying enemies, uh, the way the game works in a way is you can wind up following them off of ledges unintentionally. So you gotta be very careful uh, with how you're moving when you're locked onto them. Um, but some of them are hidden in a way. There's another one, whoops. There's another one right here. You can see its eyes right there. So you gotta always be on the lookout for them. There's a treasure right here on this corpse. Some fresh spice if you're a caster. The interesting thing about the gargoyles is that uh, they don't drop any souls themselves, I don't think. Ooh, nice dodge. Nice dodge, Josh. Um, okay, so they do they do drop uh, regular souls, but fortunately we missed that treasure. They almost always drop um, uh, banked souls, so, you know, like large souls of a story warrior or whatever. Um, they always drop those, uh, almost always, I should say. Um, and the idea here is that the gargoyles were once human, and they were sort of transformed into gargoyles. Uh, so for that reason, sorry, my controller just started vibrating, and I think this is new. I think this was added in a, in a recent patch. So this heart here is beating, and my controller is vibrating to the beating. Interesting. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so... Anyway, yeah, the gargoyles are thought to have once been human. Um, the path that we need to take, we need to gain access to this staircase right here. Um, but we can't because of this sort of tendril or artery from the heart. So that's that's basically why we got to drop the heart. It gives us access to this staircase. Okay, so the only way is forward. You can go down below, but I don't recommend it just yet. It's kind of a waste of time if you go to the bottom floor. Okay, so... Gargoyle is here to greet us. Oh man, that was that was meaty. Yeah, see, an unknown hero soul. 
So this one has a, a crossbow, um, and he's pretty finicky. He likes to back up and run from you, and then if you're not careful, he can fly away, and then he just becomes annoying. Okay, so another one just dropped, I think. Oh no, that was the, the death rattle. <laughs> okay, so there's a treasure over here. Just carefully walk onto this platform here. Here's the flamberge. And the flamberge, yeah, we can't wield it. Uh, but it is a decent weapon. The scaling is pretty rough, but uh, it does have uh, 100 base damage and uh, 120 bleed. So if you're into a bleed build, the flamberge isn't uh, a bad choice, but there are better. Okay, so just come back onto here. Careful not to fall. And then I'm just checking around for any gargoyles. They, they like to get the drop on you. Not sure if you guys can hear that, but my little dog is drinking, and it's always a very cute sound when he does. Okay, so yeah, this guy tries to do a pincer move on you, but we don't have time for that. So yeah, don't chase these guys off the ledge or anything for their treasure. It's almost always an unknown warrior soul. Sometimes the, uh, the crossbow gargoyles can drop their uh, crossbow. It's a pretty rare drop, along with, I think, black bolts. Uh, but it's, it's really not worth chasing after them. You will almost certainly walk off a ledge. Okay, so through the first fog wall, uh, what we got to do now is get to an elevator. And there's a treasure right here that we can access if we move very, very carefully. I'm pretty sure this is just some spice, but yeah, <laughs> of course, it's nothing. All right, so just shimmy on over. And then up this staircase, we are gonna get a gargoyle dropped on us. So you do have to be a little mindful of that. It's probably gonna drop on the next platform yet. There he is. Ooh, see, I kind of got turned around there and almost walked off the ledge. <sighs> the camera in, in Souls games is the real boss. I've been saying that since the tutorial walkthrough. Okay, so now that he's dead, we're gonna wait for an elevator. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to walk across instead of going up. I think there's a treasure. I think. And another gargoyle just dropped as well. Okay, so there's a stone of ephemeral eyes. Always useful. Yeah. Bit of a trap, that one. See, that, that would basically be a bait for that treasure, because he could have fallen back. Alright, so now that we have the stone of ephemeral eyes, we just gotta wait for the elevator, and then this is gonna bring us up to the first chain. And with the first chain, we will now also, we won't necessarily have access to it because we don't have pure white world tendency, but if you are wondering how to free Lord Rydell in the Prison of Hope, the key to his cell is up here. Uh, but like I mentioned, you need pure white world tendency in order to access it. Uh, but I will show you where it is. Okay, so up here, uh, what we're gonna do is we need to kill these four zombies that are channeling the magic for the chain. And then once we do that, the chain will break. So a cutscene will play out. I'm actually gonna grab a drink really quick while this plays out. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I'm just going to mute to open up this can of seltzer. Okay. So, now that the chain is broken, I will show you where to get the key. It's just up this staircase. And there's going to be a hint here that says if World Tendency is white. Yeah. Okay, so we'll rate that. Very helpful from that player. In pure white world tendency, there will be a bridge uh, that literally bridges the gap here. And then there's a staircase that leads up. I'm not sure if we could even see it in photo mode. Maybe too high up. But okay, that's actually kind of funny. You can see a treasure on a corpse right here. That's the key. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have pure white world tendency yet. So we can't get it, but that is the key to Lord Rydell's cell. All right, but moving on, we can just go down the stairs and then... To our right, uh, I'm not actually going to do this because it, it's kind of a waste of time, but to the right here is a ledge that you can jump off of, and you can sort of see him, 
but there's a an NPC in a cage over here. Try to zoom in over here. See if I can get some light on him. No, not really. Okay, so in this cage here, that's in the center of the screen, inside of there is an NPC named Yurt. And Yurt has a interesting purpose in that his only purpose is to murder NPCs in the Nexus. Um, so I recommend don't let him out of the cage. Instead, or if you do, kill him. Uh, killing him, I don't think it affects your character tendency. Let me just double check before I give you that information. Uh, character tendency. Yurt. Uh, yeah, killing Yurt does not affect... Um, oh, sorry. sorry, 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 sorry. Killing Yurt here in Latria does affect world tendency. Um, or it does affect character tendency. Sorry. It affects character tendency. Um, and the only way to make it not affect character tendency from killing him is if you let him kill everyone in the Nexus, and then he turns hostile towards you. So because when you let him out, he's, I guess, friendly, uh, if you want to call him that, um, he will lower your uh, your world ten your character tendency. I don't believe he lowers world tendency, though, um, at all. So, yeah, he's not listed here in the wiki. So that's Yurt. Uh, you do need to kill him if you want to uh, do the Mephistopheles quest line. Uh, that's a long guide that I already have published so if you need help with that. Uh, the treasure on the corpse there, uh, right next to the brazier, that is just a uh, archstone shard, I believe it's called, and it just warps you back to the Nexus uh, without taking all of your souls. Okay, so with that explained, we are now uh, given a choice of one of two elevators to take down. They lead to the same exact place. It doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, so they go, both go down to the swamp which is our next destination. And if for any reason you want to come back up and you know deal with Yurt, you can. You can just get back in the elevator and it'll bring you back up. Okay, so going further, further down into the swamp. Okay, so there's a, there's a bunch of treasure here in the swamp and there's one very important treasure that Unfortunately, we cannot get right now, but I definitely want to show it to you. Um, there is, so this is the other elevator that we took down, this one right here. So there is an enemy over here. It's one of the prisoner ball enemies. You can see it right there. And that's guarding a treasure. That treasure is not important. I think it's just like a shard or something. It's, it's nothing special. Uh, here's a mercury stone chunk. The treasure I, I definitely want to show you, however, is right here. But it's, <laughs> obviously there's no treasure here, but if you come back with uh, pure black world tendency, there will be a new ring on a corpse right here. And that ring is called the Sodden Ring, and it allows you to walk through the swamp of uh, World 5, Valley of Defilement. It allows you to walk through the swamp uh, unimpeded. So if you play Dark Souls 1, it's basically the rusted iron ring. Um, they added it in the remake. It is not there in the original. Okay, so with that out of the way, uh, that's kind of the only world tendency events here um, that I should talk about. The fragrant ring is on this corpse here. This slowly re regenerates your MP. And then I think that there might be a couple more treasures in the swamp. Let's do a quick pass. See what's around. You can see some slug weirdo enemies. But I think that's it for the swamp. There might be one other thing down here. I don't think it's anything of consequence. Just trying to take a quick look. Yeah, I don't think there's anything down here. I'm, I'm admittedly not ultra familiar with the swamp down here. Um... I don't often fall down here, so there shouldn't be anything over here. Yeah. All right, cool. So, yeah, the Fragrant Ring is really the most important thing uh, in the swamp, as well as the Sodden Ring. But, again, that requires pure Black World Tendency, so we can't get that just yet. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the start of the swamp area, and I'll sort of take the long way just to show you how things work. All right, so this is where the elevator dropped us off. And then there's a staircase right here that is guarded by this sort of man centipede thing. 
Uh, but because we have an upgraded weapon, we just sort of cut right through them. So there are many centipede dudes. These guys are ugly as sin. Um, and there's big ones. So the big ones have tails um, that... I mean, they all have tails, but the big ones uh, can do like this pincer attack with you where they sort of stick their tails up and then lunge it at you. And uh, it's quite deadly. Uh, that said, however, if you attack them and do enough damage, the uh, the tails will fall off. And then the, the enemy sort of gets stunned a little. So this is the path we're going to take. That's the staircase right there that we just came up. You're going to turn right, and then you're going to turn left right here. And there's... I think these guys are stuck on each other. So this is pretty nice, actually. All right. Boom, man, that was great. Okay, so those two guys are unfortunately down there. Uh, we might hear from them. I don't think they can get back up here, but uh, if they do, we will we will find them. Okay, so first things first, this is the main path that we want to go up, but we're not going to go up that just yet. Instead, we're going to turn left and go further down the, uh, the pier here. And the reason for that is because there's a couple more treasures that we can get. All right, so there's a mini centipede here. Gonna kill that one. And then we're going to turn around, and then this staircase is a little hard to see, and it's kind of easy to miss. Uh, this, this stage just always turns you around. Okay, so that one's dead. So you see the tail gets detached there. And dead. Okay, so this is the Plague Resistance Ring. Very, very handy. And if you have black or pure black world tendency, a primeval demon will spawn right here. I have a guide that shows all those locations, but it does require black or pure black world tendency to get them to appear. And they always drop a colorless demon soul. Uh, well, at least in the remake, they seem to always drop it. In the original game, it was like a 90% chance. Um, and killing a primeval demon will also bump up your world tendency, I think, three points. Okay, so this is the little uh, juncture that we came to before, and now we're going to proceed through the main path. Uh, real quick, we'll get this treasure to the right here. Okay, Stone of Ephemeral Eyes, and then we can proceed up the hill. There's going to be some more centipede dudes. All right. Now you can hear them sort of crying, which is always haunting. Okay. And then a couple more are going to come down the stairs here. Yeah, so there's actually three. Deal with this one really quick before the third one shows up. All right, that's all three. So with those out of the way, we can come up here to the next fog wall, but don't forget about these treasures. Very important. Probably nothing big, but... Okay, some dark moon grass. That's actually very helpful. And a renowned warrior soul. All right, then we can go through the fog wall. And this fog wall seems innocuous enough, or this next section seems innocuous enough. However, there will be a red phantom mind flayer. Uh, and like I mentioned in my stone fang guide, uh, red phantom enemies deal more damage and have more health. They are way stronger. Uh, so you do need to be very careful when dealing with them. I realize I shouldn't have seltzer while doing these. <laughs> I'm probably going to have some burps. So we're going to wait for him to turn around. I'm actually going to equip the Thief Ring really quick. Just so I'm harder to detect. Maybe we can get a backstab off on him. No. No luck. That's okay. So he's likely going to shoot his green orb. Yep. And maybe he'll come after us. Oh, he's actually lost track of us. That's kind of nice. All right. Cool. Pick up item. Get some Age Spice. The Black Phantom versions of enemies have a better drop chance of items. All right, so there's some slugs here. That's why I'm taking it slow, I'm trying to bait them out a little. I, I equipped the Thief Ring, so my aggro radius is smaller. Oh, that's always a terrifying, terrifying ability. And then there's another one down here. And there's also a Crystal Lizard just past that Heart Tentacle. Heart, heartery? I don't know what you want to call it. So, uh, the Crystal Lizard 
the thief ring will sometimes make it so it won't see you because there's another slug right here that we need to kite out. Ooh, I didn't mean to punch it. Okay, and then the crystal lizard is obviously guarded by its own slug there. So I'm going to try to run for the crystal lizard, see how this goes. Somehow I have not been noticed. Oh, there's my dog. I think the slug dude scared him. Connor, it's okay. It's alright, buddy. Okay, so there, Moonlight Stone Chunk from the uh, Crystal Lizard. And then there's actually a treasure tucked in between these two tentacles here. Great, so that's some more Aged Spice. And then turn right for another treasure. For some Fresh Spice. Okay, so that's sort of the swamp area for the most part. Uh, and once you've reached the end, there is a new bridge for us to cross. I'm just going to check here for a treasure. I don't think there's anything... No, okay. Cool, so there's a new bridge for us to cross that unfortunately is just teeming with gargoyles. One of them is flying in the distance over here. Right there, he's got a crossbow, so let's just try to bait him over here. Yeah, unfortunately the crossbow guys are just really frustrating to deal with. And the flying AI is just sort of a, a taste of, of what's to come with uh, man-eaters. So if you have a bone arrow of your own, you know, use it. Oh god, I really didn't want to do that. Hopefully this one will just come quick. What are you doing? Yeah, the, the AI of the gargoyles just really isn't that great. They kind of just fly around and sometimes just don't do anything. Like, this guy has totally lost me. Maybe I should take off the thief ring, actually. Go back to the providential ring. It might draw his attention. Cool, he's dead. All right, we, now we have this crossbow guy. <laughs> I hate taking it so slow, but the gargoyles on a narrow bridge, it's just a, it's just a bad proposition. Yeah, see, he just backs up as soon as you try to attack him. Maybe we can just pepper him. Hope he doesn't fly away. Okay, great. And then, of course, there's a third one right here. He will drop in front of us. Let him do so. Great. And then this one dropped a soul back here. Sorry that took so long. It's just... They're a little frustrating to deal with, and I never want to jump off the bridge, especially at this point, because we are so close to the second chain that I, I definitely don't want to mess it up. Okay, so there's a treasure tucked back here. Storied warrior soul. And then there's another elevator right here, so we gotta wait for it. And the elevator's on its way up. Just watch the chain, now it's on its way back down. Okay. Should be here any second, it's a long elevator. There it is. Cool. All right, so now we're going up the tower to the second chain. And then luckily, unless you want to come back for the Sodden Ring, you never have to visit the swamp again. And I don't believe there's any gargoyles that are going to try to jump us. Uh, like 90% sure. Oh, no. I'm very mistaken. <laughs> just, just flying right there. I'm just going to run up the stairs, start killing the zombies. Oops. All right, so these guys are channeling the second chain here. Kill the fourth one, and then the chain will break, and the heart will drop. All right. Oh man, it has hands, I just kind of realized that. Yeah, it has hands. Wow, gross. Okay, so where it drops to is our next destination. And this is a completely optional thing here. Um, I really recommend going to the bottom because there are so many treasures. Uh, the downside, however, is a bunch more of these centipede dudes are coming out. So we're going to have a lot of enemies to deal with, but the treasure down there is just great. I think the gold mask is down there, and I know for a fact the uh, Ring of Avarice is down there, which the once royal mistress uh, was selling in 
uh, Prison of Hope for 60,000 souls. So we can just go get that for free now. Okay, so uh, neither of these gargoyles are real. So we just get this treasure and then drop down. And now we are back at the entrance. So you can see the arch stone in the distance there. And uh, now that we have dropped the heart, we have access to the boss. Um, however, because we've dropped the heart, uh, some of those centipede enemies will now spawn in uh, new locations. And that's permanent. So there's a centipede guy right here. And if you remember before, there's also a gargoyle right here. So on your next journey through here, you will have to deal with a centipede guy as well as a gargoyle. So you have to be careful. Okay, so heading into the main tower here, the boss is to the left up the stairs. However, we're going to go to the right. Okay, and you got to be very careful uh, when traversing this area because some of the centipede dudes like to hide out in these doorways. See? There's one right there. And there's going to be one to the right as well, although it is blocked by some pots, so we're, we're kind of safe for now. All right, so let's go get this treasure. There is no shortcut ahead. Don't, don't believe that note. Okay, so in addition to the centipede enemies, there's also going to be a couple gargoyles down here, so we have to tread very carefully. So here's a centipede guy, and then there's a gargoyle right behind him. Okay, so that's them. And then there's a couple more gargoyles on the bridge, as well as another centipede guy. And there's a, another centipede. I'll use photo mode to show you. There's another centipede guy right here. So you got to be very careful. So there's one there. There's one on the bridge. And then there's, I think one of those gargoyles comes alive. Maybe not. I can't tell. But there's definitely a gargoyle on the end of that bridge. So we have to be very, very careful. All right. So I think the best way to do this is just run up to this guy. Yep, he's going to fall to his death. This should aggro the other slug. Great, okay, he's dead. And now we just have this crossbow gargoyle to deal with. Which shouldn't be too hard. He's hitting us with a rapid fire, though. Okay, so I'm going to unlock, because he's going to fly away. And that's a bit of a pain to deal with. So let's go ahead and go to the center of the platform. And wait for him again. Yeah. So he's firing bolts from the other side. Hopefully we can get him to just come on over. Pick up these treasures. Some more Moonlight Stone shards. And there's another one down here. This actually might uh, detach. Oh my god, I did not mean to roll. And a Moonlight Stone chunk. Okay. Yeah, this makes him come back across the bridge. So that helps us out. Oh god, don't fly away, dude. All right, now he's dead. See, these gargoyles are just really annoying because of the bridges. And that's that's just level design, you know what I mean? It's not... Yeah, it's just weird level design. Makes it tough. It's a corpse right here with a renowned hero soul. And now we can head into the uh, bottom chamber. And now that the heart has dropped, we have access to some things. So you got to be careful because there's a lot of these centipede dudes. There's small ones and big ones here. So you see this big one coming. Here he is. Hello. Okay. Here's the Epe Rapier and the Gold Mask. Mephistopheles' uh, weapon of choice. Here's the Ring of Avarice. Storied Hero Soul. Give me another slug right here. Another Storied Hero Soul. Hello. Okay. I think that's it for the slugs. Might be one more. Yeah, there's one more over there. Some more souls. Stone of Ephemeral Eyes. All right. Ooh, I moved that corpse. Okay, Storied Warrior Soul. I think that should be it. Ugh, that's gross. All right, now we can exit through the same way we came in, and then we can head up and back towards the boss. I just want to walk up this staircase, and we actually kind of missed a treasure. So we'll go ahead and get that. 
Okay, so head back into the main tower and then turn right for another treasure. Great, so some more aged spice. All right, so now that we've done all that, we can now proceed up the staircase that was blocked earlier by the heart's artery, ventricle, whatever it is, slug hand, I don't know. Okay, and then there's another treasure we're gonna get as well. See, it's actually quite a short level uh, when you think about it. It's really not that long. You're just, uh, it's really the enemies that make it longer. Okay, so there's a treasure back here. Great. Okay, now we can start ascending this big staircase. One thing to watch out for, however, is there's a red phantom mind flare on this staircase. And because it's a red phantom, it will likely one-shot you. Uh, if it manages to stun you. So what I like to do is I like to wait. Just like that. And then it's possible to get a backstab on him. I don't have the thief ring equipped, so probably not. Oh, we got it. Nice. Okay. So I don't recommend locking on to this dude. Because when you're locked on, you tend to follow enemies a little bit longer than you really want to. And you don't want to fall off the staircase. Luckily, there's only one jailer here. Or one mind flare. And then that's it. So now we can head up the rest of the staircase. There are no more enemies in the stage. We have killed them all. I guess aside from that prisoner ball thing. Uh, there is a treasure back here. So just carefully tread along here. Cool. Grab this treasure. And then there's another one just past the boss fog. So we'll grab that. That's a, royal, a royalty build right there. You have the crisp laid out. It kind of sounds like I'm saying crisp laid. But he had the crisp blade. Crisp blade's really good for magic builds. Okay, cool. So the final treasure is right here. Alright, so now our final task in this stage is to kill the man eaters, and hopefully I can do this on the first attempt. Um, I will tell you straight up, man eaters is a really tough boss. They are the reason I upgraded my weapon so high. Um they, you fight one, and then after a little while, the second one comes to play, and the fight gets even harder. Uh, the one tip I can give you is try to fight them in the middle of the arena at all times. The brazier in the middle of the arena can block all of their projectiles. Um, I know it can block their homing soul arrow, um... I'm, I'm trying to think if you can block the Sonic Wave completely or if you still take some damage from it, but um, yeah, the Brazier is just your friend. You can use it to separate them and you know reposition yourself. Do not lock on to them, and also be aware that uh, cutting off their tails, it makes it so they cannot buff themselves with poison, but cutting it off makes them more aggressive. It basically makes it so, you know, when they're when the slot machine is rolling of what move are they going to do, since they don't have a tail anymore, they can't do the buffing move, so their likelihood of doing a physical attack, a punch or an overhead slam, is way higher. So just keep that in mind. I will likely wind up cutting off a tail, but I'm not going to try to do it. Okay. Excuse me. Make sure we have everything we need. Yeah, let's just put some Dark Moon Grass on there. And then let's put some Age Spice on there. Okay. Gling Ring. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, Providential Ring really isn't going to do much for us. Uh, the Thief Ring can help. Um... Yeah, that'll make it so we're a bit harder to detect, so if we can get one alone for a little while, it'll cause the other one to fly off. Okay, so this is Maneaters. So we have one. Could probably get a couple hits in. Oh, no, he's going to start flying. So yeah, when they do that charge attack, that's really the most uh, deadly attack, and if they go off the 
the bridge, uh, they will wind up flying. And their flying AI is about just as good as the gargoyles, aka terrible. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, so you just want to stay near the middle, and they do homing soul arrow, but it misses us because we're here. And yeah, I mean, sometimes they literally just, like, fly around and do nothing, and that's always frustrating. Luckily, we got them in a pretty good pattern here. Ooh, that's, that's a tough attack to dodge. Oh, God, don't push me off. Jesus Christ. Okay, so we have one of them down to about 20%. Now he's just flying away. I have had these guys completely give up before, and that is extraordinarily frustrating. I, I've had them disappear, and, like, I had to just die and, like, start the fight over. So, I don't know. Their, their AI is really weird right now. Just, oh, God, please get up and don't fall. So, when they're buffing, you do want to try to hit them at least once to stop the buff. <sighs> okay, so, luckily we got this one down pretty far, uh, but the second one is here. Yeah, there he is. So, luckily he has flown off. <sighs> Shit. Alright, so the buff has gone off. That's not really that great for us, but it's alright. It does wear off, which is fine. So that's the sonic wave right there. I also kind of lost track of the second one. So he could really jump us at, at any given moment here. Yeah, you, you want to try to always attack the one that has the least amount of health. You always want to focus on the first one. This way, he dies, and then it just becomes a one-on-one -on -one fight again faster. Shit. Alright, so I kind of have the wrong grass equipped here. There we go. Alright, so he's walking away from me. I don't, I don't know why he's doing that. Like I said, the AI just gives up sometimes. I mean, he's just walking away right now. I'm like, I hate that this is happening because it doesn't make for the greatest guide. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, this is this is the weird stuff that happens in Souls games. Like, the AI is just so bananas. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, yeah, so that's that Sonic Wave. Is he still, he's still walking away? I don't know what he's doing. I'm not going to go aggro him. I'm just going to use this to my advantage. Okay, so I went up cutting off a tail uh, of the first one. Just realized that now. Wow, I just got super lucky that that pillar was there. <laughs> Yeah, that's a sonic wave. That can really knock you on your on your keister. All right, as long as he doesn't fall to his death over there, I think I think we're okay. So we got one more hit on this guy. I I honestly feel bad that this has happened. Um, <laughs> this is probably nowhere near as hectic as your fight is. Um, but sometimes it's just the way it goes in Souls games. All right, so one is down. Uh, but don't, you know, if, if one of them is walking away, great. Use that as a, as a time to relax a little bit. Are you going to be aggroed now? Okay, you're back in the fight. Welcome. Welcome back. Okay, so let's go ahead and reset. Go back to the middle. Reset this fight. Um, yeah, anyway, I have a, a guide with a real demonstration of man-eaters um, on my channel. So if... If you find yourself not having this luck with AI, where one of them just gives up and walks away, uh, just go ahead and check that guide out. All right, so hopefully he lands. I've had them fly around for a long period of time. Like I said, I've had them just disappear and give up. But having an upgraded weapon here is really the key. It allows you to end the fight a lot faster than normal. I'm just going to take this off. Hello. Yeah, maybe, maybe the Thieves Ring was causing problems. I've never had it cause problems, but stranger things have happened. All 
yeah, this is like a very casual man eaters fight right now. I'm like kind of, kind of shocked. Yeah, so I, the way he just walked off that platform, I've had him walk off and fall. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't count as a death. So I had to just start the fight all over. Okay. Hopefully I don't take too much more damage. I don't, I don't want to use that grass if I can help it. Uh, anyway. Yeah, see, sometimes they just fly away and fly back and don't wind up doing anything. It's really weird. Man Eaters are a strange boss. You wind up, like, battling their dumb AI most of the time. That's kind of how it goes. See, he just canceled his own Sonic Boom. It's great. I've done nothing for, like, the past minute with this boss. They, they, he's just flown around. Yep, there you go. Yeah, just put on a show for us, pal. Sometimes you gotta hit him out of the air to get him to do anything. That's also frustrating. There's a Sonic Boom. I should not have... I shouldn't have gone for that hit. When you see them crouch, you, you really gotta roll out of the way. It's not worth hitting them while they're crouched. Because um, the crouch means that they're gonna dash. Whoa! That I was probably on the last frame of that. Yeah, so the crouch means a dash is coming. Um, and when the dash comes, they can carry you for a bit and easily knock you off the ledge. Jesus. Yeah. See, I can't now. Now he's stuck in the air here. This isn't. Yeah, he just. The AI of this fight is is just so annoying. Like I don't know if I'm winning or not. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I have no idea what's happening. Okay, there we go. He's back. Okay, that, I didn't mean to punch right there. Yeah, see, locking on is bad. That just, like, hooked my camera really far. Yeah, that was that was a greedy hit. I'm just trying to end this fight, honestly. That's really, that's really what I'm trying to do right now, is just end the fight. Oh my god, would you please land, bro? Thank you. All right, two hits, man eaters down. I, I really have to apologize that this was not a better demonstrated fight. I can't control what the AI does or doesn't do, but having him straight up leave is is new for me. I've had them just leave. Uh, I've never had them just give up like that. Uh, the Moon Short Sword is here, so it's, a, it's an okay weapon. Um, yeah, Moon... Upgrades, I believe, uh, increase your magic power, whereas Crescent increases your mana regeneration. There's also some full moon grass there. And then this little... This thing right here, this enemy has... This, this corpse has one treasure, but it's two items, and it's two souls. It's a renowned warrior soul and a legendary warrior soul. And I don't think... Let's just leave really fast before we get invaded here. I don't, I don't want to get invaded. Uh, but basically the idea behind the lore is that the Man-Eaters are a creation of the old monk. And basically it's one person whose soul was split in two. Um, that's kind of the idea, I think. I'm not, like, the biggest expert on lore in Demon Souls. I sort of know, like, tertiary knowledge. Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of the idea. That's why that one corpse is just past the boss, uh, and has two souls on it. It's the only corpse that has two souls. Okay, now that we've done that and killed Maneater, let's go ahead and level up and speak with the Maiden in Black. And let's go ahead and just dump into Vitality, Endurance. Let's go to 22 on each of those. And then we're pretty much done. So that is the end of this uh, tutorial here. Again, apologies if that Maneater fight just kind of went south. It's at least a good example of how weird the AI in these games can be. Um, but I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you get through this stage. The next guide I will do will be the Old Monk. Um, I have a guide for it already, but I definitely want to keep these sort of continuous walkthroughs going. I don't want to push people to you know pre-made guides. I just want to do this playthrough solid like that. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, 
please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Demon Souls Remake, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll be Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.